Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. And this is actually my first uh, video project. And um, today's project, I'm doing this hand-carved Jesus sign on a piece of three-quarter inch pine board. And uh, this Jesus sign that... Uh, Actually, it's a Jesus sign I, I designed probably better than 10 years ago. Um, I was uh, designing it on, uh, making it up on uh, Corel Draw. And then there's a function out there called Interactive Envelope. And um, I happened to click on it. And um, it allowed me to uh, stretch the lettering, shrink it, what have you. And, um, and I ended up coming up with this design. And um, I saved it. And it's uh, been pretty popular for a while and um, um, I made a lot of these signs actually on my scroll saw and here's uh, here's one of them right here uh, made from um, red oak and uh, yeah it uh, came out pretty good uh, and uh, like I said it uh, it was uh, been, it's been pretty popular but anyways um what I'm going to do today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, a hand-carved sign with um, a router. And uh, this sign is going to be an onset lettering. And um, how I'm going to do it is um, I'm going to do, use a combination of uh, 3.175 uh, CNC bits. Here's CNC bit right here, as you can see. And... Um, and a 3.175 milling bit. There's all different sizes. As you can see, I've got uh, this case here. These work really good. Uh, usually, I use these um, mainly for uh, clean out and everything. Uh, the CNC bit, what I'm going to do uh, here is I'm going to be going all the way around here tracing this sign, this uh, lettering on the outside here. All the way around, probably going down, probably the thickness, uh, probably the thickness of this bit, as you can see here. And uh, it looks like maybe it's a little bit thicker than a uh, sixteenth of an inch. But I'll be going all the way around this lettering. And then after I get done with that, I'll be using a 3.175 milling bit. Okay. And... Um, I'll be doing well, all this gray area here is this contour here. I'll be going all the way around this and cleaning this all out. And then after I get done doing that, <clears throat> I'll be uh, cleaning it up with sandpaper. Also, I have a Dremel tool that I'll go around with and clean this up with. Uh, just to neaten it up somewhat. And um, once all that's done, what I'll be doing is um, I'll sand it down. With my um, my hand sander, my mouse mouse sander, and uh, I'll be uh, spraying it with this clear coat, not to give it a shine. Basically, I'm going to use this for uh, just sealing in the the wood and everything because uh, this contour area here that you see that's shaded, I'm going to um, paint this with acrylic paint, some black acrylic paint, and um, after that dries real good, I'll be getting the mouse sander, and uh, I'll be going over that. And the purpose for the this clear coat here is so that it doesn't bleed into the lettering. But as you can see here, I trace this uh, sign onto the wood with carbon paper. Um, some people use a pattern, you know, they'll either tape it down and they'll try using... Uh, the pattern itself to go around, but uh, it gets kind of messy, kind of tears away, and then you don't see the lines. So uh, what I did is I traced it down, and um, and uh, seems to work pretty good. The other thing is, is this piece of wood here. The reason why I got this piece of wood here is so that my router doesn't, um, when I get to the edging over here, that it doesn't come off and tip to the side. So this will keep it nice and uh, sturdy as I go around. Then I'll have to 
put it over on the other side also. Um, here's the router that I'm going to be using. It's uh, Black & Decker. Yeah, it's a 5 8 horse Black & Decker, but uh, I developed a couple hacks. I got a, a vacuum uh, attachment here that I created uh, from... Uh, I got it at Lowe's. It's a, it's a PVC conduit, electrical conduit, that I uh, fastened on there. And I got an LED battery light on there so I could see what I'm doing. Yeah, because I have to have a vacuum uh, port on there because I'm doing this in my basement. And I don't want this dust all over the, all over the place. And it just keeps everything nice and neat. So um, that's what I did. Um, but anyways... Um, <clears throat> The other thing is too, um, if you're using a um, if you're using a Dremel, and I also do use a Dremel um, plunge router, uh, these bits um, these bits don't need uh, an adapter. And uh, what I forgot to uh, to mention is uh, you need this uh, reducer here if you're going to use uh, a router that only uses a quarter inch shaft. Okay. Um, so this reducer, you can get this on Amazon or you can get it on eBay. This way you can use these, uh, 3.175 bits, um, in your regular router. Okay. Um, they, they slip right in there. They, you know, they work really good. Um, as you can see, um, here's the milling bit here. Probably be using this one here too. Uh, they slip right in there and you can just put them right into your router and, you know, and uh, they work really good. So uh, I'll put this in the description so that you'll know. And uh, so um, <clears throat> it just makes it easier. Uh, I don't think it was that expensive. I think it was like $6 or whatever. But um, anyways, so uh, with that being said, uh, let's uh, let's get going to the next, uh, next spot. And we'll, I'll show you uh, how this looks after I get done tracing it out. Be right back. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I outlined all the lettering, cut in with the CNC bit all the way around. Then I went around and did the same thing with the contour, the part that's going to be uh, removed. Then I'm going to clean out here. Uh, ran into a little bit of problems. I think I went down a little bit too deep. And... Uh, it kept me from staying on some of the lines, but um, I think I can salvage this. Um, didn't come out too bad. 
I'm not too too upset with it. Uh, so um, right now, what we're going to do is move on to the next uh, next step, and I'm going to clean out all this contour all the way around the shaded area. Uh, probably going to use this quarter inch straight bit. Um, we'll see what happens. If not, uh, if this is too big, uh, I'll move into uh, using this um, 3.175 milling bit here, as you can see. Uh, this is probably the thickest, the biggest one I have in the set. So uh, we'll see how this works out. Um, not too upset about this. Made a few mistakes. Hit inside the line over here a little bit. Didn't run it too straight here when I went down. I think it was all because I had it down. I had the bit set too deep into the wood. But you know what? I'm gonna. I'll be able to straighten this out. I'm not too worried about that. I'll be able to fix that. So right now, uh, with that being said, let's let's move on to the next step and uh, be right back. And um, I'm really happy the way this sign came out. Uh, I know I told you that uh, there were a few rough spots in some areas here, and I think it was because that I went down too deep uh, when I did my um, outline with the with the CNC bit here. Um, I went down too I went down too deep. I should have probably went down. No, uh, I. I think I went down more than uh, two sixteenths of an inch, and, uh, and it was a little bit harder to control um, to stay on the line. So uh, for next time, uh, <clears throat> just make sure that if uh, if you ever do this, don't go down so deep uh, with these bits. Um, uh, it might be a little bit harder con to control when you go down too deep. So, but anyways, I was able to straighten it out, and I'm really happy with it came out. Um, this contour part here that I, uh, shaded area that I had removed, I used this, uh, quarter inch bit straight, it's a 
straight straight bit and uh, went around and removed the, all this uh, area in through here, this clean out. And um, the reason why I use this one here is because it would have taken me too long to use one of these milling bits in my Dremel. Okay, I mean, this one's a little bit thicker, but not as thick as uh, this one here. But what I did do is I went around these areas and through here with my uh, Dremel plunge router, and I used a uh, 3.175 milling bit to get into these areas in here, these close areas. And through here, I did all that because this would have been too, too thick. I would have actually would have really wrecked it up pretty bad in through these areas here. So, so I went around and straightened out some of those areas that, uh, that I messed up on and, you know, it came out fine. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, what I'm going to do next, um, with the sign is I'm going to, um, <clears throat> just go around here and sand a little bit around these edges here. And, uh, I think my plan was, I'm, I was going to just use, um, well, the contour here, I'm going to go around and use this paint here. It's, a, it's an acrylic paint. You can get this uh, anywhere, any craft store. It's about $1.50 uh, to 2 bucks. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and paint this. This area and through here and all that. And then this edge here that I uh, put this edge on with a quarter round router bit. I'm going to paint this black also. Um... But before I do any of that, I got this idea, and I think I'm going to do it, is um, this is a carving bit for the Dremel. And I think I'm going to, I got one of these uh, Dremel, um, what it is, it's uh, hooks onto the Dremel tool, this wand here, this adapter. And um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. Um, with this carving bit here, and I'm going to make it like a a texture with it all the way around. I'm just going to go around. You'll see how it how it is. Uh, after I get done, I'll you'll see. But I'm going to go around and um, texture this all the way around this contour area, and um, I think it'll look nice. And then once I'm done with all that, then I'll Paint this black, like I said I was going to do, and the outside edge. But before all that, before I do the painting anyways, I'm going to spray it down with this clear. And that's going to seal this really good because I don't want the black paint bleeding into the lettering. And it um, doesn't have to be done neat. I'm just going to brush it in there. And then once I'm done with all that, and that's dry, I'm going to use this mouse sander that I have here. And I'm going to go over this, and you'll see it, it'll neaten it up, and it'll come to life. You'll be able to see the, you know, it'll really pop out the lettering really well. Um, and then after I get done with that, then I'll go over it again with some clear coat, with, with this clear coat. Um, and uh, it'll give it a real, really nice finish. But one step at a time. So, uh... Let me go ahead now and I'll start sanding this down and through here and neaten this up here, these edges. And um, then we'll get into uh, sealing it and painting it. So uh, let's get started.
right, I'm back. Really like the way this came out. Got all the way around, little texture using this uh, Dremel bit and um, this Dremel uh, flex shaft. Went around, all the way around, made these little divots to give it a little texturing. Really happy the way that came out. Really like the way that came out. Yep, very happy with that. So anyways, here's what I'm going to do. A change up in plans. I am going to paint this all black and this outside edge all black. And then I'm going to sand this right down real nice and, really nice and smooth to neaten this up so these letters pop right out. I'm this, I decided that I'm going to stain this, the rest of this wood here, with this golden oak minwax stain. Just to give it some color, to darken it up a little bit. Along with the black paint, I think it will look great. And then uh, once that dries and cures, cures really good, then I'm going to go over it with uh, a couple coats of this clear gloss. Um, gloss acrylic uh that's no, not acrylic this crystal clear gloss and give it a nice shine and i think this will really come out nice so um let's move on to the next step and i'll be right back all right everyone i'm back for the next step just got done sanding this down nice and smooth and neaten it up somewhat with my mouse sander and then uh, I gave it a quick coat of this uh, gloss crystal clear that we talked about earlier. Um, sprayed it in this area here all the way around that's going to be painted inside these letters and all that. And around this uh, outside edge. Okay. Uh, that'll help it keep it from uh, the, the paint, the acrylic paint bleeding into this. Part of the, the sign into the lettering. Um, otherwise, it'll be hard for me to, to sand that out. So um, right now we'll get started. I got the, this black acrylic paint. Got this at, uh, I think I got this at Lowe's or, no, that was, wasn't Lowe's. Got this at Walmart, I'm sorry. And um, this works pretty good. Uh, the reason why I like using this a lot of people they use the black spray paint, lacquer or whatever, or uh, latex spray paint, and they'll spray what I'm going to do with this. Um, the only thing I don't like about using <clears throat> the spray paint is um, it takes longer to dry. With this, I actually put this down, and like within 30 minutes or less, it's already dry. So I like using this. You know, these, uh, these acrylic paints, they work really good. So, uh, we're going to get started right now, and, and we'll start painting this. So, I'm just going to go around inside all these spots here, just to make sure we get all the areas covered. A lot of nooks and crannies, especially when I use that Dremel tool with the carving bit, I... Made those little divots there for the texture. You gotta make sure that you get it nice and covered. Get in there. Don't have to be very, very careful or neat. Because you're gonna be sanding that off anyways, but you just wanna make sure you get enough paint in there to cover. I um Like using a wider brush like this and get more paint on on there. Make sure you go all the way around and the sides. So just move along and uh, we'll get this finished up. And then uh, after uh, all the paints on here, we'll 
let it dry up and uh, we'll give it a good sanding. So, a little bit more in there, finish this up and uh, I'll be right back for the next, for the next level of this project. See you in a minute. All right, I'm back. All right, well, this step took me a little bit more than just a minute. They get uh, they get completed. I know I talked about the acrylic paint that it dries faster, but uh, as far as coverage, when doing a project like this, when you got a textured area like I made over here with that uh, Dremel uh, carving bit, um, it was hard to get the paint down into these little divots that I made. And uh, what I ended up doing is uh, with the acrylic paint, um, I had a water down a little bit just so they would drop down into those areas and uh i had to go over it quite a few times and um actually i probably would have been better off just using this uh, aerosol paint here this uh spray paint here this rust-oleum it's black you can get this at walmart or any one of the bo big box stores there so uh, just something to um give a suggestion to any of who decide to try to do any of this type of work or you know cover this type of uh, textured areas, you're probably better off with a spray paint. Less aggravation. You know, I know it takes a little bit while, a little bit longer for it to dry, but you're probably better off, uh, you know, waiting than uh, getting frustrated with the, with this acrylic paint. So, but anyways, got it covered up. It's ready to be sanded down. So, we'll go to the next part here in this, uh, this video and get this sanded down and, uh, Get it ready for staining. Be right back. Okay, here we got it all sanded off. Came out really nice and neat. Like the way it came out. Nice and smooth. Really makes the letters pop right out once you get this all cleaned off. Everything kind of comes together. So uh, now I think what we're doing to do is um, these areas over here that are not painted, I'm going to use this uh, golden oak stain, minwax stain. I'm probably, I'm not going to brush it. I'll probably use a cloth to go over it with it, stain it. Then uh, after I do that, uh, I'll give it um, probably a few coats of this, this clear gloss to finish it off. And it uh, should come up pretty nice. So let's move on to the next step. Be right back. Right. 
This Jesus sign is complete. I gave it four coats of uh, crystal clear gloss spray. Finish came out really nice. Really happy with that. The only thing left to do is put a sawtooth hanger on the back so I can hang it on the wall. But all in all, the, this, uh, this, sign's, this sign's complete. What I like to do though is uh, I want to recap and uh, what I did here, okay? Just so you know, these CNC bits, I'll leave these in the description along with the milling bits here, these 3.175 bits, and also this uh, collet reducer that you're going to need for your quarter inch uh, router. I know in the beginning I told you I had. Uh, Started out pretty rough, and I think it was because I went too deep with that CNC bit when I went around and traced the sign and did the contour. Um, I went down more than uh, an eighth of an inch, I know that. And uh, what I should have did is uh, sam did a sample uh, cut in a wood so I can get my depth. And it's a good idea to uh, do that, a practice uh, run on a, on a piece of uh, scrap wood. This way, when you get into your milling bit here to do the clean out, you can set it at the same depth and then you won't run into the problem that I did. Um, but, uh, you know, and then this uh, this quarter inch uh, straight bit, uh, I, I didn't put it in the description. Uh, you can just get these at any big box stores uh, for your quarter inch router. Um, but anyways, here's that uh, acrylic paint. You can get this at... Uh, Walmart or Hobby Lobby. This is good for uh, smooth surfaces, but uh, if you're going to do any of the texture stuff like I did, where I ran into a problem, it doesn't cover well. It dries fast, but that's about it. Uh, I would use aerosol paints. Um, this way it'll get into all these uh, textured areas. You know, you won't run into a problem. Um, yeah, and like I said, there's a clear spray here. The crystal clear gloss. And then I used this Minwax uh, Golden Oak stain, which covered pretty good. I was happy the way that worked out. Um, so that, that really worked out pretty good. So anyways, um, just so you know that uh, I haven't been doing this a while that long. And I uh, was inspired by a gentleman out there in the UK, my good friend Shane. Uh, I highly recommend you check out his uh, channel. Uh, his channel out there is Fish Tank 5050 and uh, Shane does a real excellent job uh, uh, with these projects. He's done many, many of them. Uh, he's quite the artist and uh, he does a really good job with his presentation. Um, if you have any questions on, on, on stuff, he's, uh, you know, he's uh, really good. Uh, I'm sure that he'd help you out also. So check out his channel there and subscribe to it. Uh, uh, he's quite an artist. But um, anyways, with that being said, I was going to try to hopefully get more of these projects out each month. Uh, for now, though, uh, just one a month. Uh, when I get better at it, I hope to uh, get more out, more projects out. And, um, you know, once I get a little bit better at it. So <laughs> practice makes perfect, I guess. So, but anyways... Uh, with that being said, until next time.